Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So for me personally, the biggest letdown from Apple's recent launch of iPad Air 5 is the lack of decent base storage option. The base storage is still stuck at a measly 64 gigabytes and there is an option to upgrade it to 256, but that will run you down over 700 pounds. Now, if you have decided to shell out 729 pounds on an iPad Air, it actually makes much more sense going for the excellent 11 inch iPad Pro instead, which has a decent base storage of 128 gigabytes. I know you'd be missing out on that extra 128 gigs of storage with the iPad Air will offer at similar price, but you'd be getting the excellent ProMotion display, better speakers, brighter and slightly bigger screen and better cameras, which in comparison, I would happily opt out and give up on that extra storage for. So the best iPad Air to buy is that base 64 gigabytes version. Now, in today's world of cloud storage and streaming media services, can you manage with 64 gigabytes of storage? Let's look at that aspect in this video. Now, first out of the box, you get about 55 gigs of usable storage. Now, Apple does pre-install iLife apps like GarageBand, iMovie, etc., which takes up a bit of storage. But if you want, you can delete them and avail that extra bit of storage. So roughly you're looking at 54 gigs of usable storage after the OS takes out its chunk. Now, is that going to be enough? Well, this broadly depends on what you are planning to do with your iPad. If you're going to use the iPad to create YouTube videos like I do, then it will not be sufficient. You will either need to subscribe to Apple's iCloud storage or transfer them off onto an external storage, which is going to be easy as the iPad Air 5 has got faster USB-C port, so you get nearly half the transfer times of a traditional USB port, which was actually on the last gen iPad Air 4. Every 10 minute 4K project on LumaFusion takes about 10 gigs of storage and a two minute 4K clip will run roughly about 700 megabytes. So you see, if you're a digital creator, then opt for the biggest storage option that you can afford or be prepared to pay for the cloud storage or use external hard drives and pen drives. Moving on, when it comes to pictures and videos, if you're going to store your entire collection of family albums, then even that will take up space. You see, a picture shot using iPhone 13 Pro Max camera takes roughly between two to three megabytes. So about 500 pictures shot at 12 million pixels will take up about a gigabyte of storage. And if you love creating video memories, then a one minute video, say shot at full HD, takes up up to 120 megabytes of storage. So that will soon add up. Then if you're going to buy and store movies downloaded onto your iPad, then high quality movies come at a whopping five to seven gigabytes and standard definition movies at three gigabytes each. Next, if you're a gamer, then standard games like Asphalt 9, Need for Speed come in at about three to four gigabytes. But online streaming games need a lot of resources and it can take upwards of 10 gigs as you start to build up your profile. Finally, if you love to try out apps, maybe for personal preference or for work, then the average size of an app will be about 500 megabytes and pro apps like LumaFusion, Procreate will be about two to three gigs each. So you really need to define your iPad usage before you shell out your hard earned cash on it. Now, when it comes to external and cloud storage, you can certainly offload some files onto them, but mind you, you will not be able to install apps or move them onto the cloud or external storage. Apps will reside on your iPad and they do take a physical storage available. Now there is an option to unload apps which you don't use, but this literally means reinstalling them when you need to use them again. So with external storage, you can certainly move video files, movie files or ebooks onto them and free up space on your iPad. When it comes to iCloud, the biggest advantage of this will be to store your pictures and videos onto them. The way this works is that your iPad will still have a low-res version of the image or video which you can still view. But as soon as you want to edit it or make any changes, then it'll download the full copy from the iCloud. Next, I do get these questions from students. Ebooks, notes and other reading material does not run you down on storage space as videos do. I mean, if you look at this graphic intensive ebook like Photoshop for dummies, it will be around 60 megabytes. So you can store a wealth of ebooks before having to worry about running out of space. 
So I think I covered all grounds here, guys. Now, bottom line is 64 gigabytes will be enough on the iPad Air 5 if you A, watch all content via streaming services and not download videos and movies. B, do not install many heavy resource intensive games at once. C, do not build up a huge photo library. If you use the iPad as a content consumption device, then you'll be totally fine. Take my wife's iPad Air for instance. She streams all media. Her phone takes up the bulk of all our picture library, so the iPad doesn't feel the weight of it. And then she uses cloud for storing her files. Now, she started recording HD videos in anticipation of her own YouTube channel, and the storage soon got filled. So as long as you're not a digital creator planning to rely on the internal storage of an iPad, then by all means, the 64 gigabytes base iPad Air 5 will be perfect for you. But if you're planning to use your iPad for any resource consuming tasks, which I mentioned, then first see if you can use cloud or external hard drives and make do with that 64 gigabyte storage. Otherwise, you'll need to shell out more cash for a higher storage iPad version. Now, everyone suggests going for the Pro instead of the 256 gigs iPad Air 5, but even that 128 gigs, is that going to be enough? I personally use my iPad Pro, which has got the base 128 gigabytes of storage. And as a digital creator who uses the iPad to edit all my videos and store 4K footage on my iPad, even a terabyte will not be sufficient and it will eventually run out. So I try to offload as much content as possible onto external drives and subscribe to Apple's iCloud. But if you're not a digital creator, then you can be a bit more relaxed with the 128 gigabytes of storage and you can happily build up both your PUBG and Call of Duty profiles on your iPad. So that's my thoughts, guys, on the 64 gigabytes base iPad Air 5 storage option. And I am hoping that this video helps you in making the right decision. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop it down in the comment section below and I will try to respond to each one of them. And guys, whilst you're there, the subscribe button is just a few pixels away. Please hit that, subscribe to my channel and support me so I can keep making these videos for you. And if you liked this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button so YouTube algorithm will like my content and push it to more viewers out there. There is much more content and giveaways as well coming down your way, guys. So please stay tuned. Also, I'm active on social media as well, especially Instagram, and I will be posting giveaways and every other details on there as well. So please follow me. I'm going to put the Instagram profile on the screen as well as in the description box below. So please check that out and please do follow me, guys. I really do appreciate all the support you've been given me from the start of this channel. So that's all for now. As always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.